If we have two point charges Q1 and Q2 a distance r away, the electric force between the two point charges can be found using Coulomb's law, K Q1 times Q2 over r squared. Then we can use delta U equals to the negative work done by the conservative electric force and some calculus to find the potential energy for the system of two point charges. The potential energy will be K Q1 Q2 over R. So U approaches zero when R approaches infinity. This means that the potential energy is zero when the two charges are infinite distance apart. It is like the reference point ground is infinite distance away, which makes sense because it means that the system has no potential energy when the two charges are very far away from each other and have nothing to do with each other. So this is the equation for finding potential energy between two charges. Is potential energy a scalar or a vector? Work and energy are scalars. 5 joules of potential energy is not the same as negative 5 joules of potential energy, so signs are important. For this equation, we must plug in the signs for the charges. Unlike the vector force, I don't plug in the signs here, I only use this equation to find the magnitude of the force. Remember Newton's law of gravitation? The gravitational force is big G mm over r squared between two pieces of mass a distance r away, very similar to the Coulomb's law. The gravitational potential energy between little m and big M is also similar to this equation. The gravitational potential energy is negative g m times m over r. On the surface, those two equations differ by a sign. But that is because the mass is always positive and the gravitational force is always attractive. However, in order to have an attractive electric force, the charges must be one positive, one negative. And when we plug those signs into Q1 times Q2, we naturally get a negative potential energy, the same as this. So in the case of attractive force, the potential energy is negative. It's just that the negative sign is embedded in the Q1 times Q2 part. Of course, if Q1 and Q2 are both positive or both negative, we'd have a repulsive force between the charges and the positive potential energy. For one point charge, we have the equation for finding the electric field produced by this point charge a distance r away, E equals to kq over r squared, which is also called Coulomb's law. Since u equals to qv, we can also use the q1 to produce an electric potential v1 over here and then place q2 in that potential v1 to get the potential energy. So we put q2 in the potential v1. And if we cancel the q2, we will get v1 to be kq1 over r. And we can just drop the subscript and turn that into a more general form V equals to kq over r. This equation gives us the electric potential produced by a point charge q a distance r away. And the v approaches to zero when r approaches infinity. It's like the reference point ground is infinite distance away. Because electric potential is a scalar, it is important for us to plug in the sign for the charge. Unlike the vector field, I don't plug in the sign here, I only use this equation to find the magnitude of the field. This equation also tells us that a positive charge produces positive electric potential while a negative charge produces a negative electric potential. To summarize, if we have two point charges, there is an electric force between the two, k q1 q2 over r squared. There is also a potential energy in the system k q1 q2 over r. But any single charge can produce the electric field and electric potential everywhere around the charge. And we can use kq over r squared to find the electric field produced by that charge and use kq over r to find the electric potential produced by that charge.
the Q here is the charge that produces this electric field and the, this electric potential.